Hello! Welcome to the Chirp YouTube channel. I am Christy. I am your friendly online speech language pathologist and specialist in children's communication development, including behavior, because behavior is a type of communication. Today, I'm going to do a little holiday special for you. We're taking a break from our longer series on the pyramid model. I'm going to give you some thoughts about gifts that you might choose to buy for a young person in your life who has some sensory challenges. In this video, I'm not going to go into great detail about the modalities themselves. I will mention how you might tell that a child has needs in any particular area. But then I'm going to move directly on to items we might wish to purchase that can be useful to people who have needs in a particular area. We are going to start with the olfactory sense. The olfactory sense is, of course, the sense of smell. The major way you can tell if a person has needs in the olfactory area is that this person might sniff strange things. This person might like strong scents. Maybe even things that we consider to be gross. What we want to do is we want to provide additional input into that pathway to the brain because it seems to be a little understimulated because that's why the child is sniffing other weird things. You might consider anything that has a scent to it. But please be careful because fragrance, fragrance is one of the most dangerous items in a product most of the time. Artificial fragrances can lead to all sorts of health effects that we don't want. So it's a good idea to stick with natural scents such as the ones that come from essential oils, the ones that come from spices and herbs. For example, you might choose a passive essential oil diffuser like this one. I have one that's a cute little ceramic tree which I will link to below if possible. And you might give along with this passive diffuser some peppermint oil or even some fur oil which would smell like a tree. That is a great gift for someone actually for anyone I give these gifts as housewarming gifts because this is one of the ways that I make my own house smell good. I have passive diffusers all over the place and I drip peppermint oil. My own personal preference is peppermint oil with some lavender in it. It's uplifting but also calming. So I approve of that. Keep in mind that if you are interested at all in links to products that either I have tried or I have researched and approve of, there will be information about those and links down in the information box below this video. The next thing you might consider is candles. Candles are very dangerous for children, <laughs> and of course because of the fire, but also because they can have lead in the wicks, they can have artificial fragrances, we don't want any of that. So this isn't really a gift for a child, but maybe for an adult there are some candles that are scented exclusively with essential oils, so they are much safer and less dangerous. You still have to light them on fire, however, so keep that in mind. You could also consider making a kit. This is a very fun game to play. It does take some of your time, but not very much money. So if that is a good trade-off for you, then consider this. It is a game where you create little containers. They can either be little Ziplocs or actual maybe old spice jars that have been emptied of spice, but you still have the glass jar and you still have the metal top. You can put particular items inside that have a strong scent and then you can play the game where, the, where you take turns closing your eyes and smelling something and then putting it away again. Maybe they are, maybe they are even in um, jars that you have covered with paper so you can't see what's inside. And then you have to point to a picture on your board of what you think you smelled. I smell dried orange. I smell cinnamon. You can put cinnamon sticks in or cinnamon powder. It's a very fun game and it's great for kids who are learning to communicate also what they're smelling. Next, we are going to move on to the visual modality. 
You can tell that a person might have increased needs for visual input because a lot of times they're looking at things up really close to their eyes. They like flashing lights. They like things that move quickly by their face. Maybe they drive, they like to drive those old cars that go around in a circle and they sit down at face level next to those cars. Maybe they wiggle their fingers, maybe they watch shadows, or they like to watch things in the mirror. These kids, or adults, probably could benefit from some more sensory input to their visual modality. The first thing I'm going to recommend for this is gears. Something like this would be a great gift. I used to have something called gearation, but it is difficult to find these days, and I have found something even better. I use a little magnetic board and then I bought a gear set for about $15 and use the gear set on the board. It requires one battery to run and the kids get the joy of not only watching all of the gears spin but of figuring out how to position them so that they all run and they all look cool and the whole thing is fun to watch. It's very soothing. Gears are great. Marble runs are another great option for kids or adults who have sensory needs in the visual area. The marbles, usually kids will need some help building these and I have a pretty old video up here now about the sturdiest way to build a marble run. I have a lot of practice. I'm not an engineer, but I have built a lot of marble towers with a lot of different kids. And that video contains my hard learned expertise. It might help you too, or it might help your child. Of course, there are lots of other videos online about how to build marble run towers. Now that I mentioned that your child will probably need your help to build the tower, depending on age, depending on uh, mechanical capabilities, once the tower is built, it's very, very enjoyable to watch the marbles go down. Please keep in mind that marbles are edible, not in a good way. Marbles can be eaten by children who might tend to eat things that are not good for them to eat. So usually I only give a child one marble, or at least I keep track of how many marbles I have doled out and I don't leave young children alone with marbles. The next option is rocket balloons. These are very inexpensive and very fun. Many of these toys are great cause and effect toys. Many of these toys are great for increasing interaction because the child is so motivated to play with these toys that the child is willing to request them, even if that's a hard skill. Another option is dominoes. You can choose regular size dominoes or you can choose the big size dominoes. Now we're not playing dominoes in a normal way. We are setting them up and then pushing them down. You can ask the child how, what shape they want them, the, it to be set up in. An S shape, a Y shape, a T shape, a long snake, a circle. There's so many options for increasing communication while playing with dominoes. Those are a great choice. I also like penguin runs or car runs where you put the car in at the top and it zooms down. I have the cutest little wooden one that is a great choice. And I have a penguin run that is plastic. And the one I have is pretty noisy. It makes a little squawking noise as the penguins go down the marble run, but they go back up all by themselves. So you can just watch without having to even do anything. And sometimes that's very soothing. <laughs> Also, I have some spinners that are lights where you hold a button down and then mine is a dinosaur with lights around it in a circle. So it looks like a dinosaur in the middle of a tornado or something. It's very cool. If you turn the lights out and turn your dino dinosaur spinner on, it looks amazing and it gives lots of input to your visual sense. Of course, you can consider mirror balls or disco balls. There are 
plug-in ones now. You don't have to hang it from your ceiling necessarily, but you can plug it in and turn it on and have a little dance party because it will shoot beautiful colors all over the ceiling and the walls. Next we are going to discuss tactile needs. You can tell that a child probably has an increased need for tactile input if they're constantly touching things, rubbing things on their skin, putting tape on themselves, maybe enjoying the feeling of sand or squishy things, always playing with a pencil. You can, you can see this in children. And in fact, most kids benefit from something to fidget with while they're sitting, while they're listening. The first option, of course, is little fidget toys that are sold in a package. You can just buy a bunch of fidgets and get an idea of which ones are your child's favorite. Most of those are plastic, they're not sustainably made, they're not very sturdy, so I don't really love them, but I do have a box of them in my classroom. The ones I prefer are a little bit longer lasting. The first thing I want to recommend is perhaps some bristle blocks. Bristle blocks have bristles, of course, that stick together, but they also feel really nice just to hold or to rub on your skin if you are waiting or listening to a story and you know you need to kind of move around a little bit. You can move around with your bristle block. I also have some squishy toys. I don't have this with me at the moment, but I bought a pack of stress relieving Halloween shapes. I have a mummy, I had a cat and a vampire and an ogre, all sorts of cute little things. And they sell them at all times of the year. And they're, they're fun because they squish nicely and then slowly they stretch back out and then you can squish them again, but they're very nice to play with. If you have a little more budget, you could choose to get a sand or water table that you can choose either one of them. I think they have some where it's sand on the bottom and then you put in a tub and you can put water in there or the other way around. And I think those are really cool. But you also could just get a bin from Goodwill and put some kinetic sand in it because kinetic sand was one of the favored items in my classroom. It is fantastic. I love to play with it. It feels really nice. It doesn't go splattering everywhere usually because it's a little bit sticky. You do want to seal it in an airtight container, so keep that in mind. I usually put mine in a Ziploc inside of a bin to keep it from going bad. And not only that, some of ours, after a lot of kids had played with it, sometimes it got smelling kind of like feet. And when that happens, it needs to go and you need to get a new batch. If you are a parent or a guardian of a child who has sensory needs in the tactile area, it's a great idea to put textured wall coverings in their room or maybe along a hallway. A lot of kids run along the hall and touch things as they're walking and it would be really cool for a child to be able to walk along and touch something bumpy, something corrugated, something smooth, something fuzzy, something polka dotted. How cool would that be? I recommend art supplies to meet this need. For example, finger painting, painting with cinnamon or with grit or sandpaper for doing etchings. There are all sorts of great options for this. There is also a kit where you can do string art and I think that one's really cool too. Don't forget the unsung hero of the tactile world, shaving cream. Yes, I know it's messy. However, you have a countertop, you have a table in your classroom, and you have a towel. The deal with shaving cream is you spray it on the table and the child and you get to play in the shaving cream. It's delightful. It's one of the most calming experiences that you could have. It's very relaxing. Kids love it, partially because it is messy. And if your kid doesn't love messy things, that is another video because that is sensory avoidance. And I have a video on that up there.
I'm going to show our friends how we clean up all of the shaving cream. Just a cup works so well. Mmm, and it smells oh, no. good in here. It's, hey, it's broken, no! Oh man, we better get a new one. I'm not going to be able to link all of the videos in this series because I think I have a limit of the number of cards that I can put up there, but you will find them all in the playlist of sensory modalities and you will find them all linked below this video as well. So you can learn a little bit more if one of these in particular tweaks you or if they all tweak you and you'd like to learn more. Next we are going to discuss auditory needs. Obviously if a child is having some auditory needs you're gonna know because they probably really like different sounds. They probably listen really up close to things. They might make loud noises in order to hear them. They might function better if there's some noise in the background, if they're listening to music, if there are nature sounds around them. So this one is going to be pretty flexible depending on the kind of home environment or classroom environment that you wish to create. I do not, not, recommend leaving the TV on all the time or leaving on something with words in the background all the time. That can be too difficult to process. Number one, screen time is terrible for children. It's also not super great for adults, but it's really bad for little kids. So don't just leave the TV on, please. A good use of the TV is to put in a nature DVD, a nature sounds DVD, where there's a babbling brook some cows in the field mooing and sounds of birds and breeze and you can almost smell the wildflowers. That is a good use of your television. Feel free to do that. There are also CDs or channels on uh, YouTube where you can find lots of nature sounds. I love that. Also consider instruments. My, one of my favorite is a large roll-out piano mat that the kids can stamp on and make music and different instrument sounds. By stepping on a trumpet, the piano will sound like, well, a little bit like a trumpet. An instrument set is great, but really noisy. A lot of these auditory ones are going to be noisy because that's what the kid is craving. Think about noisy things and then incorporate some more of those in whatever way that you can into your environment. Next, we're gonna talk about gustatory. Gustatory is our sense of taste. It has to do with our tongue. So, it's going to be things that have a strong taste to them. You could create a kit of different sauces that the kid could try. If the child is open to spicy things, there are some really funny little kits that are zombie sauces and everything's very spicy. Or um, you could create a kit of different barbecue sauces or different sweet and sour sauces, different Chinese sauces, different Indian sauces. You could do the same thing with spices. It's always great to get kids trying different flavors. There are some healthier types of candies that are available. Some sour gummy. When they're feeling fidgety, they can spray a little bit of peppermint in their mouth. And some kids this does wonders for. If they really do have gustatory needs, a peppermint or sour spray or even cinnamon sometimes can change their behavior for the better. Next, we are going to discuss proprioception. This is not one that a lot of people are familiar with, but it is how our bodies sense pressure. So we're going to think about things that provide pressure to the child's body. If you have a lot of money for this one, you could think of some kind of a squeeze machine. I bought one for one of the churches that I worked with. I guess they bought it with budget for this particular ministry and the kids would roll through it. It was kind of like a pasta maker. That was pretty cool, but also quite expensive. You can meet this need in much cheaper ways, like a bean bag and two bean bags. The child can get in one, put the other one on top and you sit on it. Or you can have a yoga ball and the child sits, lies down on the carpet or on the couch and you sit on top of the yoga ball. Easy peasy and a lot cheaper than the pasta machine. 
Trampolines are great for proprioception because the child is bouncing and feeling that pressure to the legs and therefore to the rest of the body. Also, treadmills, if your child is willing to walk on a treadmill, I get my proprioceptive needs met through running outside if possible, but I do live in very chilly Minnesota and much of the year it's too cold for my lungs to run outside. So I also have a treadmill. Also, if you can do some kid yoga with your child, that's a great option as well. Having kids lift heavy things. So maybe a toy that has a really heavy part or you make it heavy. I bought a preschool bowling kit but I replaced the little plastic ball with a medicine ball that weighed five pounds. <laughs> so I made the kids roll the ball, but then they had to get up and go get it. Another option you might want to consider with proprioceptive needs is a weighted vest. Some of them are very cute little denim things. Some of them are a little more industrial looking, like maybe your child is a secret ninja, but they are not a bad choice. There is a certain protocol, however, that you want to use. You don't want to leave them on too long and you don't want your child to become dependent on them to function. You simply want to provide some extra input that your child might benefit from. Another option is Under Armour squeezy clothes. I had one little guy that I worked with who seriously could not function without significant proprioceptive input. And his mom put him in really tight under clothing, Under Armour, that was squeezing him all the time and little bike shorts or bike pants underneath his pants. And it really helped him stay calm. So that's something also to consider. Next, we are going to talk about the vestibular sense. Our vestibular sense is the sense that tells us whether we are up or upside down and what our angle is, where we are in space. Kids who have more needs in this area typically benefit from being upside down and from the activities that allow their body to move through space, like a swing or a slide or something that allows them to spin around. So if you can put a swing in your child's room or in your basement or your garage, I really like the egg ones that can just spin and spin and spin and spin. I had in my last classroom, I had one from Ikea and I think they still make them, but I will make sure. And if so, there will be a link for you in the box. Trampolines are another, another beneficial tool in the arsenal for vestibular input. Not only do you get the proprioceptive input of your feet experiencing pressure, but you get the feeling of moving through space as you jump, which is great. Kids yoga routines are really great for this. A lot of poses such as downward facing dog or triangle pose are upside down and that moving through space and being upside down are really good for kids who benefit from more proprioceptive input. Also, any sort of exercise that the kid is doing is probably going to benefit her in this situation. If you think about it, walking, running, playing hockey, roller skating, they all move through space in various different ways. Now we're going to talk about time awareness. This doesn't really have a fancy name except for the passage of time, but maybe it's chrono exception there chronoception i just made that up and a lot of our kids have difficulty with the internal sense of the passage of time so they have difficulty being ready on time knowing how long is 10 minutes so we want to use visual timers most of them are something that looks like a pie timer so as it ticks down there's less and less red on the timer and more and more white and the less red there is, the less time there is. So that helps kids figure that out. They have wall ones that we can hang on the wall, but I like the regular little cooking timer that looks like a pie. You can also choose to create some kind of a visual schedule where that timer can be used. 
And you can use timers on a particular watch too to help kids see, help them chunk up their day a little bit better in their minds. Our last modality is the internal sense of interoception, which is the sense of what's going on in our bodies. Is my stomach hurting or is that my lungs? Is Did I cut my finger or does my toe hurt? Am I hungry or do I have to go to the bathroom? These are real issues for a lot of kids. We are all different and our brains are all hooked up slightly differently. So sometimes we have trouble in different areas from the areas that someone else has trouble in. If your child is having trouble in the area of interoception, there are a good number of books that talk about the body. It's a good idea to train your child to think, to know the names and the positions of different organs and different feelings in their body, and then to be able to label them. And then of course, a particular, perhaps a doll or a bear or some kind of animal that you can work on this with. I got for my nieces a number of years ago, a doll. It was quite expensive, but the reason why it was expensive was because you could open up a flap and you could see all of her organs inside her all attached and you could take them out. They were soft too, just like her. And you could get boys and girls, you could get them in a variety of skin colors. And I thought it was super cool for working on this issue. And of course there are charts that you can get that describe the body. This is also good for emotional awareness because I had trouble not knowing whether my stomach was hurting because I was sick or my stomach was hurting because I was scared. Talking about these emotional things is a great idea also. So I will put some links down below to ways, products that can help you talk about emotions and other internal sensations with your child. There you have it. This is our mega holiday special edition of what you might choose to purchase for a child or an adult who has some sensory needs. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the box below what are you going to buy this year for the holidays. Thanks for watching. If you feel like it, you can give me a thumbs up or you can subscribe, but you don't have to do either. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.